Good morning. The Lord has really burdened my heart the last couple of months. And I'm going to try to not be a total basket case today. I guess it was about a month ago now, uh, Pastor Letty asked me if I would consider speaking once a month. And speaking makes me so anxious and uncomfortable, not something that I enjoy doing, per se. I spent a few days in prayer uh, about it, and I knew that the Lord was calling me to a new place in my relationship with Him. I had felt stagnant and just going through the motions, going to church, singing songs. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is something that you want me to do, would you reveal to me that this is what you want me to do? And over the next couple of days, he did, and I I made kind of my first ever vow with the Lord. I said, God, I've stood in front of so many people in worship, even speaking, singing songs, introducing songs, conjuring up a walk with you out of stories that I know. having no experience with you personally. God, forgive me. I said, Lord, if this is what you're calling me to do, I'm willing, but Never again do I want to stand up in front of someone and presume to speak for you and be conjuring up things out of my own imagination, conjuring up things out of stories that I know or scripture passages and presuming to speak for God because I know something about his word. Anybody can read this. The Pharisees read this and knew it better than anyone else and they were the farthest from the Lord. I said, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm willing but you have to speak through me and you have to give me in my life, you have to give me an understanding and an experience with you or else I won't, I'll I'll stand up here and be silent for 30 minutes before I open my mouth another word of something that he has not given me on my heart and taught me for myself. So the message that I bring you this morning for me first and foremost and he's just brought me to despair and anguish thank you I'll just keep the whole box brought me to despair and anguish and agony over my sin in my life and things in my life that I have chosen to prostitute myself to before the God that loves me and created me and sanctified me and redeemed me. And so that vow with the Lord I made and I feel that he has honored that because he has broken my spirit over sin in my life. And now that I see it in my own life, I see it all around me. I see it in our country. I see it in our church. Even amongst us who sit and claim to love God, to sing songs about him, to come here every week, we think we're something special because we come and we raise our hands and we worship him and we honor his holy day, but our lives are filled with idolatry. We may not have golden or silver gods in our houses, but if you look into each one of our homes, I believe it doesn't take long to figure out what the center is. Every room is situated around it. Hours and hours are spent in front of it. 
numbing and pacifying our souls. And for me, that's exactly what was happening. The television and entertainment, even more than that, in my life was God and was king. I cried out, I said, God, I want to be a spiritual leader in my family. I want to be a a spiritual man in my family to guide my wife, children one day. But yet I see my wife walking with you more than I am. I see myself staying up late at night, watching movies, watching television, listening to music, playing games, checking sports scores. And I can't even get up in the morning to spend time with you. God said, if you want to go to a new level in your life, if you want more of me, if you want a better relationship with me, your cup is full. You filled it. Your time, your energy, your resources are full. How do we expect to grow in the Lord, to spend more time with him, to spend time in his word, to spend time in prayer and meditation when we're consumed with entertainment. When we, have a, when we have a rough day, what do we do? We go home and we pacify ourselves with a television show, with a movie, with all kinds of different things rather than what God tells us in his word. He says, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For me, I recognized that the television specifically was a hindrance, just like we just talked about I encourage you to do a little interactive exercise with me for a minute and tally up in your mind the time that you spend Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, television, Netflix, YouTube, sports, movies, the movie theater, things that we do to entertain ourselves. And then tally up in the other category, minutes, hours if you have them spent in prayer each week, spent in meditation. Count up the lines from movies that you know versus the lines from scripture that you've embedded into your heart by the power of the Spirit. If you were asked right now to stand up and give a testimony to what God is doing in your life, would you have to think back days, weeks, months to think of something that he's done? Or would you be able to recognize just this morning, just yesterday, how God is moving you, how God is teaching you to recognize the truth about yourself and revealing more to you of who he is? Let me ask you something. Do you think that Satan is going to come into this church with a six-pack of beer and syringes loaded with drugs to try to convince us that We shouldn't be spending time with the Lord to try to appease us, to try to draw us away from God. You think he's foolish? Satan, he is crafty and cunning beyond measure, and he knows that the ones that will destroy this church are here among us, and that the way that he's going to get to each and every one of us individually is by destroying our walk with the Lord. And this is something, it doesn't just happen to where you just recognize, oh, Oh, all of a sudden, I'm not walking with the Lord. It is a slow fade, and it is a slippery slope. The devil loves to use tools like passivity and apathy to numb our hearts to where we are then relying on the things of this world, on entertainment, on music, on television, on all the different things that are out there to pacify us instead of spending time in the Word of God and being people of God, people filled with the Spirit. Passivity literally means allowing someone or something to affect change in your life without either your consent or without confrontation or any type of fight on your behalf. This is what Satan is doing to the church. This is what he's doing to us individually. For a year and a half, I felt the moving of the Spirit on my heart. 
not even to get rid of television or cable or Netflix or whatever, but to dial back, to, di- to discipline myself and to spend more time with him. And over and over, I made excuses. I justified the idolatry in my life. God didn't want more of God. I wanted more entertainment. I wanted more stimulation. I wasted away hours and hours and days and weeks, morning after morning, forsaking time with the Lord because I was too unwilling to let go of what was hindering me in my life. And I know that God forgives and I know that he's gracious and merciful, but there's no excuse for wickedness in the church and in our lives. There's no excuse for us putting something before God and being unwilling to change when the Spirit calls us. So before I ever brought this, or even considered bringing this to you all, my spiritual family, my brothers and sisters, beloved ones in Christ, I had to gouge out that in my life that was hindering me from knowing Christ more. We decided that, Lex and I both, that God was calling us to higher ground. We got rid of the TVs, no more. Cable, no more. Netflix, no more. The things that hinder. And for each and every one of you, this isn't a call to just get rid of television in your house. This is a call to recognize the Spirit's voice on your heart. And to look at your relationship with him. Are you coming here and singing songs and lifting your hands and praising God and saying, I love you, Lord. Let it be a sweet, sweet fragrance to you. But yet your worship is a stench of idolatry to God because you are unwilling to let go of what needs to be let go of in your life. To worship him the way that he calls for you to. Is worship for you an emotional high where you come here every week and it's like fireworks, bang, bang, boom, all these colors, and the next second it's dead and lifeless? I don't know what God is doing in your heart, and I don't know if this message is going in one ear and out the other, or if it even makes sense to you. But what Pastor Letty said, each and every one of us have things in our life that are hindering us from knowing Christ. Hindering us. And when God moves and puts conviction on your heart, you have two options. One, become stagnant and sterile like the Pharisees, refusing to accept the power that could make you holy, thinking that doing, doing, doing for the Lord, all of your ministries, all of your works, all of the the church services and songs are somehow going to make you right with God. Or you can choose to acknowledge the sin in our lives by the power of the Spirit. This is not something that we come to on our own. I told you for a year and a half, I rejected this. I rejected what Second Timothy says is the power that could make us holy. The Lord brought me to a place to where there was a two-week period. I didn't even mean to not watch TV or not spend time watching movies or different things. Didn't even mean to, but yet God filled my life with just a spiritual banquet, a spiritual harvest that was unsurpassed by any other times in my life. And once he revealed that to me, even though I had not yet decided to throw off what was hindering me, He revealed this to me just by the power of his spirit. And then he he showed me, you have two options. Number one, cling on to 
the things that you think are pacifying and numbing to you in this world, the things that you love, your entertainment, your different things that, that you enjoy. Or number two, be willing to give up what needs to be given up so that you can follow me, so that you can speak for me. You want to speak for me? First, I have to baptize you in the understanding that you are a despicable sinner so I can show you who I am and so I can take you out of that place to higher ground. It was a, it was a revelation to me how much I don't miss those things in my life. I can tell you that in the last, what is it now, last two weeks since we decided to do this, my life is full of, of God's spirit working in my heart. I can recognize his spirit more clearly. I hear him throughout the day. I recognize his goodness and I'm more grateful for things. Just a walk, a connection with God that is so much more real than the religious system that we buy into to think that coming to church is a replacement for knowing our creator. You see, Satan wants nothing more than to just zap the fight out of you and me. If he can get us coming to church, filling the seats, tithing our tithes and offerings, singing some songs, and thinking that we can have this neo-gnostic perspective of our separate lives. This is our physical life where we do what we want, we engage in what we want, we have entertainment, we have stimulation, we have all these different things. Entertainment, yes. Movies, yes. Songs, yes. Uh, Friends, yes. Partying, yes. All these different things. Or church, yes. Message, yes. Let go of sin, no. Get rid of this, no. Get rid of that, no. Spend time in prayer, no. We think we can have more of God without letting go of the world. And we think that we can go and have a little taste and have a piece of the world in moderation when our carnal hearts are drawn to that. It, it, rem- <laughs> it reminds me, of- never mind, uh, let's, let's read this. This is 2 Timothy 3. Starting in, uh, we'll just start at the beginning. I wanna go through just a couple verses here. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving, will slander others, have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and get this, Love pleasure rather than God. That Greek word for pleasure literally meaning the smooth things, the the things that make the spirit feel good, the easy things. Loving pleasure rather than loving God. And get this, church, he is talking to us. Do not be deceived. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them holy. Boy, that verse just... (laughs) it spoke to my soul another version of the Bible says they will seem religious but reject the power that can make them godly having a form of righteousness a form of righteousness later on down he talks about how these people are learning, 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 but never coming into a knowledge of the truth. Oh, did I see myself in that? (laughs) Do I still see myself in that? Learning, learning, learning. I wanna study, 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 but never coming into a knowledge of the truth. What truth is he talking about? The truth about ourselves. The truth that we have things in our lives that need to go. Things that we are clinging to before we are clinging to the Lord. It, 
I, is this registering for you? It, does it bother you that our church is married to the world? That we would rather spend time sitting down in front of a television, in front of the internet, listening to music in our car, sp- rather spend time doing anything except for reading God's word? The first thought that comes into a Christian's mind when we think of getting rid of television, and I know this because I'm telling you from experience, is what am I going to do with my time? I'm going to be bored. I'm, I'm going what, to, what are we, we going to do when we have guests over? What are they going to do? What, what about when you have kids and you want to put them in front of a show so that they can get ready for bed and kind of quiet down and get ready for night time? It's like everything is, Satan has designed this in our culture, less than 100 years old, to numb us and to pacify us and to put us in front of something other than God's word and to think nothing of it. The Bible talks about having a relationship with God in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice and I lay my request before you and I'll wait in expectation of you alone, it says in the Psalms. It talks about that when we go to bed, he should be our last thought, that we should awake in the middle of the night in prayer and supplication to him. Is the first thing when you wake up the desire to spend time with the Lord? Or do you turn on your phone, turn it off airplane mode, check your Facebook status, check your email, see what's on the news, listen to a radio show, waking up late for work, (laughs) trying to rush and get yourself ready, ready to get there on time? Do you do that when you come here? It's time to come for a Sabbath, God's holy day. Well, let's wake up at the last minute and rush in the door at the last minute. This is not something that we can conjure up on our own. And I've seen this battle, this struggle in each and every one of your lives. Specific people who have been talking over the last couple of weeks, not knowing that I was going to plan on speaking about this, discussing openly about God asking them to get rid of things in their lives. And I see affirmation and confirmation of that in this congregation and you all, my brothers and sisters. And I know that God is calling us to holy living. We think that we are going to be able to face the tribulation, face the persecution that it takes, face death ourselves, our loved ones, when we can't even let go of one of these in our own home? And maybe it's not a TV. Maybe it's something different for you. I'm not, like I said, this, this message is for me first and foremost. That's why I keep mentioning that. But for you, it could be something totally different. We claim to stand for the Lord and we cannot let go of things in our lives that are keeping us from knowing him. He says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. This is an active process. Seeking God is not a passive thing where we can just come and be lulled to sleep by sweet words from from a pulpit and pretty songs and good music and all of these different things. This is an active process, a painful process. You think Jesus was joking when he said, you have to die daily, you have to pick up your cross and follow me? When you will suffer persecution? because of my name's sake? You know, I considered not even going through with this conviction, God forgive me, out of fear that other people would feel judged by my decision to honor what God was doing in my life. Fear that other people would feel judged. I I brought this up to a friend of mine He asked me, he said, you know, Chris, what's been up in your life lately, last couple weeks? I said, glad you asked. And I said to him, not in so many words as I just did to you, what God was doing in my life. And you know what the first thing he said to me was? This is a spiritual man, a religious man, a godly man, I kid you not, says, well, what's the next thing you're going to do, become a monk? And then presumed to spend the next 10 minutes telling me what was good about television and what was okay about it. And I am not pointing a finger at this person because I tell you I did that for a year and a half. 
And I am not here to put a conviction on you or to try to force you to do something or to make you feel guilty for something or bad for something. I'm here to tell you what God has done in my life and who he is becoming to me out of a willingness of responding to what his spirit is doing. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts. Do we go to potluck after convicting sermons from Pastor Letty every single week and we take our first bite and we never again think of the words that the Spirit has impressed on our hearts while we were in this very room? We come in here week after week after week, clinging to tradition, the same as any other Christian of all time, the same as the Jews of old who clung to their traditions but crucified the Messiah on the cross of Calvary? The Bible says if we keep on sinning, if we keep on rejecting the calling of the Spirit, after coming into a knowledge of the truth, after he reveals it to us through his word, through prayer, through our surroundings, through other believers, all in confirmation with what he says in his word, if we continue rejecting that after coming into knowledge of the truth, there is no longer a sacrifice to cover these sins. You think the author of Hebrews was joking when he wrote that? You think he wrote that lightheartedly? You think the disciples, if they would have had televisions in their day, would have sat for hours and hours being entertained by light coming through a screen, allowing the world a window to flood into their spiritual homes? I justified, I said, oh, Lord, it's just sports. I love NBA, I love NFL. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no profane language. There's no sexual things. There's no innuendo. There's no murder. There's no killing. All the things that we like to justify in the show. And... It's all good. And when commercials came on, here comes a flood of alcohol. Here comes a flood of get a bigger, better this, a bigger, better that. Half-naked women on a screen for commercials, for cheerleaders, all these different things. Giving the world an opportunity to flood into a home that I, as a spiritual man, am supposed to be defending by the power of the Spirit. And I am not only okay with it, I'm opening the door to it into my home. Opening the door. Come on in. And thinking that that is not going to affect my spiritual walk with the Lord, thinking that I can keep entertainment in my life separate from the Spirit, foolishness, foolishness, deception. I hope that we can see, each and every one of us, the sin in our own lives because the Bible says that if you think you are within, without sin, you're deceiving yourselves and the truth is not in you. Those are harsh words. And God help us if we can read his word over and over, come here week after week, claim to honor his holy day and not even see the sin in our lives. Not even see it. That is what Satan wants. He wants to pacify you into oblivion until you can no longer even hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Millions of Christians going to church, sitting through services, singing songs, lifting up their hands, dancing and praising God, and the next moment living, prostituting themselves to other gods in their life. That's what Israel did. And oh, they came and repented. Oh God, we've worshiped other gods. We were just talking about this and two weeks ago in our judges class. They come to God and, oh God, we we repent. We're so sorry for doing this. And you know what God says to them? He says, I hear your words. They sound good. Your services look good. You seem to be honoring me, but your hearts are far from me. And I will no longer rescue you because you refuse to honor me. You worship other gods. Get your other gods to save you. So when something hits you in your life, you think you're gonna rely on the Holy Spirit all of a sudden? You think you're going to conjure up a relationship with him when there's death, when there's tragedy, when there's disease, when something hits your life and takes you from 80 miles an hour to a dead stop. 